Hello everyone, my name is Ash and welcome to a dissection on Game Informer's new information on Dragon Age Inquisition. Bioware and Game Informer teamed up to do an entire month of coverage for the new game. Links to their site, hub, and articles are in the description, but let me break it down for you here with more insight into Thetis as we go along. The third installment of Inquisition will be released next year in 2014 for five platforms. PC, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. There's no support for Nintendo consoles presently due to Frostbite 3's engine incapable of working on their devices. What we've seen so far between Dragon Age 2 and Inquisition lies in the three years since Anders blew up the Chantry. Orle is still torn by civil war, Ferelden is still recovering from the Fifth Blight, and mages and templars are fighting with each other, against each other, and against the Chantry. Lord Seeker Lambert is presumed dead from Cole's doing, the demonic spirit mentioned in D.A. Asunder, but before the Lord Seeker died, he cancelled the Navarran Accord, which severed the Seekers and Templars from their duty. The Circle of Magi was no more, due to Rise and many other mages from the White Spire Uprising choosing to fight the Chantry. But amidst all the chaos, a huge tear in the veil has opened up and demons from the Fade invade the land, with no need to attach themselves to a physical host. Demons and abominations are plaguing the land, but everyone is so self-absorbed with their own problems as it is. There's only one antagonist controlling the tides. While you may be fighting many enemies, there is only one entity that is causing all the destruction. Unlike Origins, where you are deliberately fighting against Loghain, you must actively search and discover your unknown enemy throughout the story. And that's where you come in, the Inquisitor. You have the option of either working with people or literally calling a brigade against a location and forcing people to bend to your will. You'll be managing as the head of the Inquisition, whether you either gain respect or demand it, which gives undertones similar to the Paragon Renegade style from Mass Effect. As the hero and sole survivor of a previous disaster, the responsibility falls on you to figure out who is causing all the mayhem and get everyone to band under your power. As far as the protagonist goes, in a shocking turn of events, Bioware has now made the player character either human, elf, or dwarf. Similarly, in Origins, where the player character had its own origin story depending on the race, the character is now voiced and does not come with a preset name. You're not an Amel, and most likely not a Kuzlan or a Dukin. That way, you can build and represent your character in-game, and not only will you build the persona of your character, but you will build the reputation of the Inquisition and bring it to power. You will of course be accompanied by companions in your long journey across Thetis. The three companions confirmed are two returning characters, Cassandra Pentagast and Varric Tethris, and a new character named Vivienne. Cassandra and Varric teamed up post DA2 after, in the canon, Varric traveled and fought for King Alistair and Isabella. The details are long, but you can read it in the comic series The Silent Grove, Those Who Speak, and Until We Sleep. Vivienne is a new character, a circle mage of Elysian heritage. She was originally in line for First Enchanter at Mont Samard Circle, the same circle where the Elysian Grey Wardens had their base of operations in Orlais. With the civil war in Orlais and the Chantry at arms with the mages, she joined up with the Inquisitor to lend her help. Characters making appearances as non-companions are little known, but we do know Morrigan, and to another extent Flemeth, will have great influence in Inquisition. Morgan is definitely in Orlais, as pictured by her attire and, in the art, the hall is donned with Empress Selene's portrait, the same portrait that is illustrated in the front of the next book, The Mask Empire, which will come out in April 2014. But this also leads to the question, is she in Orlais, or is Morgan looking for Empress Selene and Halam Sheral? Empress Selene, who we know has left Thalo Royale because of the Elven Rebellion. We won't know just yet. Beyond dealings with Orlais, Colin and Liliana were quietly mentioned in Game Informer's article regarding a red-haired Orlesian and special knight captain. We already know Colin's involvement with the game because of his voice actor, and Liliana's appearance concerning her role as a hand in the divine and her influence in Dragon Age Asunder. Another reoccurring character is the unnamed Kunari that we have not only seen in the E3 reveal trailer, but also in this latest trailer and in two of the screenshots. The scars are the same, and same with the horns. Whether this Kanari is friendly, or is actually an antagonist, is to be determined. The banner that he dons in the trailer is also noted in the second trailer, in a field next to the lake. The Kanari have a great role in the next game, as illustrated in Mark of the Assassin DLC for DA2. 
We'll see this unknown Canary most definitely in the next game. As far as Thetis is concerned, players will get to play more controlled, open areas. Repeated dungeons are no more, as the story will extend from West Orle to East Feralden. Orle, Feralden, and quite possibly the Free Marches are all accounted for. The only destinations that I can say for certain are available are the Frostback Mountains, as listed on the locale entry in the trailer, and the deep roads as shown in the screenshots game informer provided. A spot I'd also like to point out is in the small picture in the second trailer, something that looks similar to the first trailer's scene where Cassandra stabs a map. In this shot, the spot now exists within the waking sea between the free marches and Ferelidon. The sword points to the sea and in between Hyever and Amaranthine. Whether that comes into play or not is speculative. Some of the locations will have unique properties on them. Quoted in the article, Restoring a ruined desert outpost will allow the player to transform it into an Inquisition stronghold. We know about the castle the hero can manage, but different properties expanding across Thetis makes the Inquisition a visibly more powerful entity in the game. Now switching gears, Bioware and Game Informer offered more detail into the gameplay. A leveling system with specializations, such as Spirit Healer or Blood Mage, are back in the game. The actual specializations aren't listed yet, but the two have been deeply involved throughout the game and lore. Many of the demons and enemies you fought in the previous games are back, as well as new demons coming from the Fade. You'll also have the chance to fight against normal factions such as the Canari. Enemies will no longer individually attack you. They will attack you in groups where you'll have to fight different types. The Prowler type enemies will devote their time flanking you, while archers may attack you from a distance. Players will also have the options of choosing specific abilities to counter these foes. Warriors will have a pulling mechanism to draw an enemy close, while your mages will always have the advantage from a distance. The game is still heavy on tactics. Whether you decide to put your companions on autopilot is up to you. You'll have the choice again to use companions at your will, or let them roam free. Additionally, enemies do not level with you. You might be level 12 when you see a level 99 dragon. You can come back to these foes later on, expect hard enemies to be scattered across Thetis that you can't fight from the start. Speaking of dragons, Bioware has now implemented a mounting system. It's confirmed that the player can ride horses in-game, but that is not the only mount the player is restricted to. Dragons are on people's minds, as well as the possible return of griffins. Sure, people say they don't exist, but that's what they said about a cure for tranquility. But for now, anything beyond horses is purely speculative. As far as specific mage gameplay goes, Game Informer noted on the destructibility of some environments. Mages can use their spells to reconstruct broken bridges at their leisure, or to simply destroy one. It's up to you. Pushing away from gameplay, the interface is still in pre-alpha. However, it looks like players will be able to use a compass feature similar to what you see in Elder Scrolls, as the top of the middle of the screen. The compass indicates friendlies and enemies as well. Standard controls for Xbox seem to be X, Y, B for spell combat options, while A is for activating interactions. The PC version will be as intuitive as it was in Origins. Bioware does not plan to scale back to represent the same interface that Xbox and PlayStation have. Oh, and funny story. The clunky and huge greatsword on the player's back with no holster? That's back. But I'm sure Bioware will address that down the production line. As far as the customization goes, the developers have said customization is very much in the game. Crafting will become a key for customization, though the armor will represent the individual's character's style. As far as other tidbits of information, I thought it'd be interesting to note that on a tweet that was made by Mark Dora, Bioware's executive producer for DA, he noted on the original canon that the devs adhere to for their lore in the books and comics. Although the player has the option of following their own story, the canon that the devs follow specifically is a Dalish elf warden who makes Alistair king and then dies by killing the archdemon. In DA2, Hawk is a mage and should have sided with the mages as well. Personally, I think the reason why the Dalish elf origin is canon is because of the Illuvion backdrop that we see in Origins. In the original origin story, the player goes along with another elf named Tamlin to discover a strange artifact in a cave, which is an Illuvion, a mirror that acts as a portal in which the old days which was used as a means of teleportation and communication. Also, it delivers the taint as made known by Tamlin who, in the Dalish elf's origin story, 
contracts the darkspawn taint after touching it. We're also introduced to Meryl, who decides to save the mirror in DA2 and tries to restore it. The Luvians will be a huge plot device in Dragon Age, especially with Morgan's use of it in Witch Hunt DLC and Meryl in DA2. On another note, this also calls into the question of the old god baby, the child that Morgan can have with either Alistair or a male warden. Bioware notes its responsibility to uphold these lingering questions and make an answer for them. The question here is how much impact will a child with the soul of an old god matter in a world literally torn? In any case, that is all the information that I had thus far that is of note with Dragon Age. The Game Informer Hub is listed in the description. I highly suggest looking at it and the new footage from Game Informer within the, this month. So thank you all for watching, liking or favoriting if it was informative to you. Or if not, or if you'd like to say something, please state it in the comment section below. Take care everyone, it's gonna be a long wait till fall.